Knowledge is power. And this is Powerful Stuff. Wellness Education Cannabis Advocates of Nevada present the Weekend 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour with the Weekend Radio Team. For the next 60 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the cannabis reform revolution sweeping the nation. Now, let's fire up the news hour. Here is the Weekend Radio Team. Welcome to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Coming to you live from the Waywalker Studio at Vegas All Net Radio. I'm Kurt uh, Ducat, your host. Uh, we have uh, William Beach Baker on the show today. Michael McCullough, How you doing? Perry Heichu, and today our guest uh, is Drew Green from uh, 420 Tours and the Higher Power Cannabis Chapel. And of course, we have Lawrence behind the boards, always making us sound great. <laughs> so, so. Big news uh, just recently happened. What? We uh, Nancy Reagan passed away. Yeah, yeah the, what's uh, going on this? Former week? first lady uh, Nancy Reagan passed away Sunday, and uh, 94 years old, and um, quite a uh, quite a interesting lady. Uh, she touched our lives in many ways, as you know, back in the. Uh, the 80s and stuff, her and the president, you know, the war on drugs. The first ladies take on a lot of challenges, whether it's a, uh, a, a first lady that takes on drugs or takes on uh, prohibition or anything else. And uh, she took on the war on drugs. I remember. I remember the fried egg thing. That was that was thing. And and there and the partnership for a drug free America. This yeah. is your brain. Sure. And this is your right. brain. Yeah. So, I had so um, when I was up. some of it I applauded at the time. But the uh, the part of marijuana I never did applaud. But um, and and on cannabis. So I always thought that was a separate issue. But uh, methamphetamines and cocaine and some of these things we don't know what the hell they are. Some of the time, right? So uh, that part okay, you know. But uh, I don't know, Michael. What do you think? Well, I think that. Um, when Nancy Reagan came into uh, the White House uh, with her husband Ronald, uh, they had just come off the Carter administration, which was actually leaning towards decriminalization on a federal level of cannabis. Um, but there were uh, issues with the chief of staff at a High Times Christmas party and lines of cocaine that show you how little things can sometimes change the course of history. And so Carter's marijuana decriminalization kind of derailed. That but was, there was uh, a very uh, laissez-faire uh, attitude in the late 70s and yeah, yeah. the beginnings of the, the disco and party scene. Right. But when when the Reagans came in and we had mourning in America, uh, Nancy's cause became just say no. Mm. And, and just say no wasn't simply just say no. It was just say no and let's lock people away. And it really started the trend, which was then accelerated in the Clinton administration, uh, for putting away nonviolent offenders for uh, consensual uh, drug violations. So you think Hamilton Jordan helped kick it off and got her excited, and then she carried it out, right? I think I think those couple of Christmas lines that <laughs> Hamilton did at that party set back the movement by, what is it now, 40 years later. Okay, you well. Know? But anyways, uh, still the First Lady, whether it's... Uh, Hillary or anyone else, um, God bless them. We thank you for serving, and we're, we are sorry to see you go, in a sense, okay? And I, I God bless look, America. I kind of look at this as maybe it's a time to end the war on drugs. Yeah, wouldn't that yeah. be nice? Yeah. At least on marijuana and cannabis and hemp and, and uh, all the other crazy stuff. I think a message so simplistic as just say no uh, may have been uh, acceptable at a different time with a different uh, lack of research that we have now on both the medical benefits of cannabis as well as the the lack of harm relative to tobacco and alcohol that we knew, know now. So I think along with, uh, with Nancy Reagan, we should be burying Just Say No as a relic of an earlier they time. They are. They are. I heard something come out recently that said that the people who fund DARE are no longer actively pushing marijuana as a gateway drug, and they're starting to back off some of that more aggressive rhetoric toward cannabis and trying to focus on some of these other things. And I think that comes from the realistic, uh, not only polling, but the real numbers that are coming out on the number of prescription drug overdoses we're having and how much heroin is affecting our our inner city youth and things like that so they're starting you know i heard uh, I don't know if it's a true statistic, but I heard that more people died from prescription drug overdose and heroin overdoses last year than Americans died in car accidents. Mm -hmm. And wow. if that's true, then of course you're going to get the attention of a lot of not only elected officials but policy makers, you know, that are not just kingmakers but people that are, you know, have control of these budgetary uh, these budgets that are going to these 
and, free, and youth education it right programs. There. It, it's like about that. dollars. So if if Dare is refocusing away from cannabis and towards uh, the opioid problem that we have in the country, well, more likely than not, it's because they're looking at the fact that they'll be getting declining dollars into their nonprofit against for cannabis prohibition, and they're. These organizations' uh, first duty is to maintain themselves, and so they're going to focus where they can get the most money. Well, it's the argument I use with you often. We need to fight the battles we think we can win, and I think that's where they're coming to a realization of, is that they don't think they can really win this anti-cannabis battle, so they're free-focusing to where they know they can do damage and actually make a change for the good. So hopefully this can actually evolve into a positive thing. I hope so, but, you know, mm. as far as fighting battles we think we can win, uh, I don't know. We... In this state, we did not get this medical marijuana reform uh, uh, with, the, with the thought we can win. Uh, many of us were working for many years with no hope of victory, but we knew we were doing the right thing. Whether we could convince enough people so that we would win is what would take a long time. Mm. Right. You know, and we'll, yeah. we'll have that opportunity again in November when yeah, people are going to weigh in on the, uh, the end of a, of a statewide drug war in Nevada. Right, right, exactly. So... so so, sorry to see you go, Rance, Nancy, but... R.I.P. Yeah. Give me a shovel, I'll <laughs> throw some dirt on it. <laughs> so, uh, what else do we got in town here? Uh, well, you know, that's a good segue into our guest, yeah. who is a, a, a minister and uh, <laughs> trying to do something here uh, powerfully wonderful in the cannabis community for the mm. religiously insane. Very bold and unique. <laughs> I approach. hope I could say that uh, with uh, reverence. Bringing something original to Las Vegas. Yes. So... So uh, introduce our guest, Kurt. Yeah. So talk, today, today about. we have Drew Green from uh, the the Higher Power Cannabis Chapel. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do over there? Got it. Well, first off, thank you guys for having me here uh, on the radio. Uh, huge supporter, huge advocate. So, uh, yes, uh, we are the Higher Power Cannabis Chapel, also known as the Cannabis Chapel. We have a new location opening up on uh, 827 South Las Vegas Boulevard. We are uh, right behind Cupid's Wedding Chapel. Ultimately, what we're looking to do is make that a patient resource center, uh, also a site to hold our Sunday sessions. Our first Sunday session will be on uh, Sunday, April 24th. Uh, it is Magus Lock Fortune that will be actually uh, hosting the event. And it's really just a chance for not only patients uh, to come out, but also non-patients who are interested in getting education and maybe some spiritual information on how cannabis might help with their life. No, very yeah, good. so you don't you don't have to be a patient to attend. Um, and it, it is a chapel, uh, what is it, the, the higher power is a, that, you, it, it en encompasses all religions, right? Correct. Yeah. We believe in a higher power, not a specific God. All religions are welcome. We want to make it a place that nobody feels segregated or excluded in any way. So mm -hmm. uh, to also note, we will be uh, holding uh, wedding ceremonies there at the chapel. So if anybody is interested in getting a, a cannabis wedding ceremony, which I think will be somewhat new out here in uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, please uh, contact us. Is we have a cannabis, bit. Uh, church uh, or the cannabis chapel uh, support uh, some of the marriage views that we have in uh, in Utah right nearby us <laughs> uh, you mean I didn't the, get that on, uh, I didn't get that on my script oh, oh, I, mean, uh, I don't know about that uh, uh, whatever well, whatever your views are um, <laughs> you know I, I have a little bit of experience in this area because um, I've been an ordained minister for the for the past uh, decade plus um, joining uh, Roger Christie's THC ministry in Hawaii oh, nice. uh, and well it was and probably one of the nicer parts about it was that um, that my attorney sat me down and said don't you dare try to do this because the federal government isn't going to like it and in fact five years later Roger got raided and uh, his church got shut down because the the feds said that it was nothing more than a front for drug <clears throat> dealing and uh, in studying this, the, I found that the courts have routinely uh, discriminated against those individuals who say that cannabis is part of their religion. Their, their mm. judges are very skeptical about this. Mm. Um, and they'll go after organizers of these churches, sort of as false prophets, if you would. Uh, although I haven't seen any instances where they're going after the actual um, parishioners. Um, 
Is, have you guys given any thought to this? We did uh, give a, a great deal of thought to this before we actually even formed the church. Um, and uh, the, our approach is, is basically that, uh, you know, cannabis is, is uh, we do believe cannabis is a, you know, healing plant. It does mm -hmm. have a bunch of therapeutic um, benefits, but it is not part of our sacrament. Cannabis will never be sold or consumed actually on property. Uh, it is merely just a chance to bring in a bunch of people uh, that either are cannabis users or not cannabis users and have them understand that, you know, there is a higher power out there and they mm -hmm. should believe in it. So mm -hmm. we... Um, try to structure ourselves a little bit more towards agnostic or Unitarian Universalism, mm -hmm. not necessarily, you know, cannabis is all and that's our sacrament and, mm -hmm. and anyone included in anything we do over at that location. Right, and the basic uh, Judeo-Christian uh, religion, uh, a, a lot of people believe that cannabis was the, uh, the tree of life. Um, mm -hmm. And so it was, even though it was in, important in that respect, um, it was only one of the bounty of the Garden of Eden, so it doesn't have to be the main sacrament to be uh, to be part of your overall religious vision. Mm. Hmm. That's interesting. Although I've got to say, the federal courts don't hold that at all, and uh, I've I've got uh, I've got a couple of scary things here. One uh, uh, from the. Uh, Oakley Vueja Native Church of Hawaii versus Holder uh, in uh, 2013, and the judge said that no reasonable juror could infer from what is presently in the record that Mooney's religion, Mooney being the the the, the uh, originator of the church, uh, that his religion is any more than a strongly held belief in the importance of the benefits of marijuana. Even if this belief is sincerely held, and even if marijuana is in use is indeed beneficial, uh, the court cannot conclude from the record that a reasonable juror could find the plaintiff's beliefs belief is religious in nature. And in the Roger Christie case, uh, the government was uh, held a motion in limine to, to limit and prevent him from using the religious, uh, f the religious Freedom Restoration Act of 1993. Um, and the, the court held that prosecution is the least restrictive means to further the compelling interest of the government. And so the court holds that the defendants are not eligible to use an RFRA defense. So the court was saying that even if these people had a a good faith belief and that it was that it was a religion for them the state had a more compelling interest to prosecute them and shut it down and that's a that's a scary thing whether you whether you're on the left or whether you're on the right yeah you know? it is absolutely and, but but since those decisions we've had we've had a lot of change in attitude and we had the what is it, Indiana had the first cannabis church of Indiana got mm -hmm. approval from Indiana and it's you know the tides changing just like it is in this whole movement so I um, mean we're gonna I guess Roll the dice. And <laughs> I, I, I guess, although it's not that much time, uh, you know, you know, yeah. we're talking about less than th less than three years here. And yeah. at the same time, the president, uh, in an article that I found, uh, has just said he's not going to do anything on marijuana reform this year. Right. He could reschedule, yeah. you know. And I really held out hope for all these years mm -hmm. that in his last couple of years right. he would be able to do something. Uh, but, but but he, he has not. He has not. And ago. and Tom Angel Wright of the medical marijuana, uh, pardon me, the uh, the marijuana majority told reporters. It's unacceptable and, frankly, embarrassing for a president who has so nonchalantly acknowledged his own marijuana use to allow the federal government to continue classifying cannabis in such an inappropriate category. Right. And that brings me back to Bernie, right. who's the only one who says, let's deschedule. Well, yeah, like we always say, politics has strange bedfellows, mm -hmm. and, uh, and some of our friends turn out to be our enemies, and we, <laughs> we've experienced this, certainly, haven't we? Yep. And that's why we're so diverse. We can. I heard John Stewart interviewing, I think it was uh, with John Kasich from mm -hmm. Ohio. It was a little while back, and he was talking about how he was like, oh, you know, have you ever smoked marijuana? And Kasich is like, oh, yeah, I smoked it in college and this and that. And he's like, well, you know, then how are you so against it? He's like, well, you know, I've changed my mind and, you know, this, that, and the other. He's like, well, you know, if you would have been caught smoking mm -hmm. that by, let's say, your... your uh, the guy, what do they call those RAs? RAs, sure. You know, and would have got a criminal record and this and that. You very well could have been prevented from running for the office that you're seeking right now. Well, it's not that he would have so, pre been prevented from it, well, but in fact, possibly. he would have been character assassinated right. from here yeah. to Maine. Right. 
Absolutely. You know? But it is what yeah. it is, you know, and still these people are just, they don't want to turn it on, you know, and right. you can't force them to do it. It's very disappointing. I have people tell me all the time, like, oh, you're not getting the word out. It's like, dude, we are getting the word out. Trust me. People don't want to hear it. And that's very right. difficult to break through that. <laughs> But what would you call it? Brainwashing over the course of a lifetime, or mm. just oh, yeah, much. propaganda? Well, 80 years yes, ago. I, I, I don't know what other you know. word to use. There's a little more conditioning, I guess. Right. Been conditioned over a lifetime to believe what we're told to believe, mm -hmm. yeah. and it's so disheartening to have people admit these things and then still just kind of like cl close their eyes to it. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure what you do at that point when they just kind of shrug their shoulders and go, "Oh well." Yeah. You know? <laughs> Well, so when when is your generation going to get this uh, revolution started? Right. When is my generation? I don't yeah. know. Hell, yeah. I don't know and, why. Uh, you know, you, know, you got to tell your side of the aisle yeah. to turn out the vote, I guess. <laughs> there we go. And, and the truth is, this okay. is, those are a lot of those people are the alcoholic generation and stuff like that. And there's a lot of these people, they don't understand. Um, cannabis is a lot different. Most cannabis people that I know uh, that smoke pot or whatever, they use it, uh, most of them use it for medication. And... Um, <coughs> And they're not out getting drunk, and they're mm -hmm. not out doing crazy things, and they're much more wholesome and uh, than than most of the other people that I know that sit around and drink all the time, you know. Well, yeah, and then you right. also got the, a lot of the the professionals like doctors and that, yeah. and that they're starting to turn to cannabis now over alcohol because they can go out and enjoy an evening with cannabis, and right. they get called into surgery, uh, you know, the next morning, and they're not hungover. Yeah, you know yeah I mean? absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah, there's uh, just uh, tremendous, tremendous mm -hmm. benefits. I mean, we love doctors, and, uh, and we, we invite the doctors to call we can, and uh, we'd love to talk to you, uh, especially the pain doctors, because um, we can we can help you stop writing those opioid yes. uh, prescriptions and uh, for all them lower tabs and muscle relaxers and everything else, because uh, if patients have uh, skeletal muscular diseases and, and MS and stuff like that, they can use medical marijuana, and, and they can get off of these drugs. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm living proof of that okay so um, it really works folks so tell us more about the church well uh, you know we'll see on uh, April 24th okay. no doubt. Yeah. yep right, right after yeah, 420 now what uh, the website is uh, thecannabischurch.com. Okay. We'll have another website coming up, thecannabischapel.com, kind of talking a little bit more about the uh, facility itself. I mean, obviously, it's beyond just the church. We're really trying to make that a, a focal point where, you know, people can come visit. Uh, it's right on Las Vegas Boulevard. Uh, we will have some nice murals and stuff outside that people can take pictures of. Mm -hmm. Of course, weddings are going to be big. Uh, right. We also operate a education and job training company called Trim Ready. Mm -hmm. We'll do our classes there. Uh, our fleet of 420 vehicles are parked outside, so it is very much you know, more than just a uh, church. I was just going to say, you operate a number of other cannabis-related businesses. Um, would you like to get into that a little bit? Like you, you're quite the entrepreneur. You got your you got your fingers in all kinds of pies, you know, into the picks and shovels game of it at least. Yeah, thank you. Well, I, I I'm a strong believer of the industry. I'm a strong believer of the industry out here in Nevada. And um, you know, I just decided to kind of take action a couple of years ago. And uh, ancillary businesses were really the only businesses that were generating revenue, making money, and didn't really have to deal with all the red tape. So, I think it was uh, about a year ago. I was here speaking of Trim Ready when we had launched, and uh, we have a little over 750 graduates a lot of them have been placed by uh, dispensaries cultivation production facilities um, and then from that we rolled out uh, 420 tours and we're happy to say we're Nevada's first uh, cannabis travel and transportation company we have promoters out on the strip that promote tours we also assist people uh, from out of state with getting legal of course Nevada is going to hopefully be the mecca of cannabis one day and because we already have 44 million tourists coming out here it's gonna be some people that want to get legal cannabis so i saw a website called bud and breakfast where they help people find cannabis friendly accommodations when they're traveling are you looking into branching into that at all on a local level because people always have a difficult time finding somewhere to stay where they're not going to get harassed and of course even written in the recreational marijuana law this is going to become an issue because i believe contained within that law even it's not really supposed to be done in public mm -hmm. so you're going to have all these people coming here requiring this cannabis and there's not going to be really anywhere for them to do it so this is going mm -hmm. to become a friction point between the locals and the tourists i'm 
I'm, I'm foreseeing. So, well, what do you see in that? We run into that issue right now. You know, we pick people up uh, at any hotel, we take them to a dispensary, and uh, the first thing they ask is, "Where can I smoke this?" And it's it's very difficult, you know, to say you just spend all this money at this dispensary to do things a legit way. Go up to the uh, you know top floor of the hotel parking lot, or just right. light up a joint walking back to the casino. So it is definitely something that needs to be addressed. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see if the casinos get on board with it, or if you know mm-hmm. there ends up being. Some other. And of course, the alternative is that they can use edibles or correct. Or I think that all depends on the gaming commission, though. I think a lot of these gaming operators would love to get their hands on some of that money, but I don't think monetize, the gaming control yeah. board is having any of it at all. No. I think until they see the industry really progress out here, and there is commerce, and there is a lot of activity, and a lot of these businesses, you know, get open, they probably won't really rule on it. And and that, this is a shame, is where you know we had uh, some of the people in the gaming industry try to get into this game. Oh yeah. Came in and they said, app gaming industry said, absolutely not. It's one or the other. Mm-hmm. Now, if we would have had those people in this game, we would yeah. see much quicker turnaround there'd be a, uh, a hotel out there somewhere one of that these guys were involved in that would be a cannabis yeah. friently hotel someone would get a pig for sure medicine yeah. in our rooms you know what i mean yeah. but yeah. now unfortunately with no one involved in it i see that taking a little longer to happen in this there might well, be a little bit of animosity too because yeah. people spend money lobbying and you know going forward and doing all this and then they had the rug pulled out from under them they're like you know what i don't like you anymore yeah. right. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't the cannabis industry that know, pulled the rug it was, fault, it was their own industry right. you know but and that's so uh, disappointing yeah. because Considering the Gaming Control Board regulates an industry that's not so highly looked upon in other parts of the country, and we've always done that. And, you know, this goes back 40, 50 years, the Gaming Control Board, and it's so disappointing for them to have birthed birthed this... uh, you know, evil industry that other jurisdictions look down upon and things like that. And we're trying to do the same thing. We're trying to regulate and control a once criminal industry for the good and they just won't get behind it and it's just it's hard for me to you know where they can't look and see the comparisons between the two industries it's just beyond me yeah but it is what it is yeah i don't know if you remember but sometime back last year it wasn't one of the owners of terrible hurts or something they were trying to get into the gaming Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. the casino business and they basically had to divorce themselves from the industry and uh, so there are some gaming people out there and some junior executives and stuff that have done that, I'm sure, if I recollect, you know, I can't recall the and, names, oh, but uh, they're out there. And I think eventually we'll straighten that all I almost all forgot. Out, you know, I really a while do. back when, when you had your shop, we had a business called the Bluebird Cafe. Sure. Oh, that, that was, was a great a, place. It yep. was like... Um, they didn't really. They didn't sell cannabis, but it was a meeting place. You could go in there. You it was a your private own. space where patients could right. communicate. It was like a membership club. You pay a small fee. Yeah. You go inside. They have equipment laid out. Mm-hmm. You know, and I thought that was clever, but there just wasn't enough of a demand at the time to satisfy it. And do you well, think that there might isn't. be? There was, even still, even yeah. with thirteen thousand patients statewide, you're not going to have a, a lounge type. But facility what's it take? that everybody's going to get together because people are not conditioned uh, in this country to go out into large communal gatherings and and be smoking and sharing pot. It just right. doesn't well, happen a whole lot outside of Burning Man or for many, Boulder. Many, many years yeah. and we did that all the time. <laughs> it's <laughs> different. <laughs> It would be different if they allowed the dispensaries to have a lounge on site. Like, hey, you bought this medicine, step right over here. Our people can walk you through how to use it properly, blah, blah, blah. Like, we used to do that in Hollywood before Prop D happened. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And then that all got shut down about that quick. But before then, you know, they purchased it, come right over, we serve them up. And that was like, that was just fantastic. Everyone felt very calm, cool. You know, there was a lot more money made. Everyone there, was happy. There are a number of reasons for that not to have been included in the legislation, but one key component would be uh, liability because if you have a patient who medicates on site and then goes and drives home and gets into an accident, uh, you as yeah. the owner of the business do have a liability. But and that's the a, state wasn't even willing to, to entertain but that. But that's a bunch of nonsense because there's no liability for alcohol providers here in the state. Sure. No, there is if not. Not here in Nevada. We're one of two states in the country that don't have it. It's here and I think New York State are one of the two states that have no liability for bar owners or if I throw a party at my house and you get drunk and you go home, that's all on you. Ha- having grown up in New York City in a family that owned a bar, I can tell you that we did have the Dram Act okay. and if we saw, if we served alcohol to somebody who was who we thought was intoxicated, we were liable. You know, well, absolutely. in Nevada, it's different. That has been tested time uh, party, and again. That has been yeah. tested time and again, so I would just 
you know, want to uh, grandfather that in mm -hmm. or just include that in the same kind of clause once mm -hmm. it becomes recreational. And I'm sure that discussion will be had down the line, but I'm hoping that uh, that was not, I was hoping that that was not the case because there is evidence of the fact that Nevada has shoved, uh, sh pushed back on that. And, and there's also evidence of the fact that, um, that drivers who drive while uh, under the influence of cannabis are aware of their impairment and tend to drive slower and are actually safer drivers in studies that have been conducted in Britain, New Zealand, elsewhere. Um, however, that is not a politically correct thing no, to say. No and that you're under the influence of any substance. Right. But certainly, in comparison with alcohol, in which, oh yeah, I'm just fine with alcohol. They, they, they allow you to drive under yeah. the in, in, impaired with alcohol uh, to up a to, limit. Right, exactly. Okay? I mean, we accept under that, and it's, it's, it's okay. Right, right. Yeah. Well, while with cannabis right. in this state, if you're driving, uh, if you have more than two uh, nanoliters or five if you're a patient, you're per se impaired, even if you haven't smoked anything in a week. And what that means, folks, is basically zero tolerance for marijuana, because yes. <laughs> that's such a small amount. Of, yes. You know, it doesn't register for most patients. Yeah. So, so your tour uh, yeah, gets around this, this problem by uh, uh, chauffeuring these people around from dispensary to dispensary. Correct, but we have still yet to really solve or even tackle where people should be smoking. <laughs> we literally, you know, pick them up, assist them with getting legal, take them to a dispensary, and bring them back to their. Would the would the back of your commercial vehicle with a with a partition so the driver doesn't get high count as a private space under the definition of the law? And could they medicate on their way back to the hotel? I've heard both interpretations of it. Some mm -hmm. people say yes, some people say no. I know that's a big thing up in Colorado and Washington, but mm -hmm. uh, the way I see it in a highly regulated state like this and in a highly regulated industry like transportation, mm -hmm. uh, no. Not, not well, worth I can, chance. Not, not I, worth I can rent the limo and get as drunk as I want in the back of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, they, they even stock it with... Yeah. with and, and the actual fact is, though, mm -hmm. that, that the hotels, by and large, are not going in there and jamming up patients if they're, if they're smoking in the room. No. If you're in a non-smoking right. room, you shouldn't be smoking. But if you're in a smoking right. room, it should be okay. And, and I can say that I, I know that the Palms, for example, uh, uh, is friendly to that and yep. as well as we've we've all been to a number of parties at the champ show uh or during the show and there's a whole lot of token going on at those yeah. things there, there are some you can you can are... smell it you come out <laughs> of the elevator down the hall which way's yeah. the party it's well that way i yeah. i'll get, i would give people two pieces of advice one if you can try to find a hotel with a balcony yep mm -hmm. huh? obviously mm -hmm. and i always know you can open i yeah. always well in yeah. vegas those are harder and harder to come by yeah, they are. so they are, you know, the windows don't really open and they do they crack that much and the wind's blowing in on you yeah. or something so it's a mess yeah. so the, if you can find a balcony man take it in a, in a minute take oh, pay yeah. the extra money or i heard from a security guard that the best thing to do if you know you're going to have a party is to actually blow smoke out into the hallway because they can't go knock on every damn door yeah. <laughs> so if the whole hallway smells like weed and the music isn't too stupid, yeah. you might be able to pull it off. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, shit, I never thought of it that way. You know, so, and it, it's just one of those things, the safety yeah. in numbers kind of thing. They don't know who it is just because it's one of the crowd. Remember, the Weekend Nevada News Hour, always bringing you information you can use. <laughs> or, or you could always just go to Alexis Park. They really, really? don't care what you do over there. <laughs> yeah, no hell, you but know? I, I always try to look for something with the balcony if I can find it, you know, just to avoid, hey, the, the, just to avoid the damn trouble. Yeah, Alexis this park is by far one of the friendliest hotels I've ever seen yep. when it comes to that. I mean, they allow the uh, the AGE there, the ICE there. Uh, they they allow you to rent the suites as as the as the booths, and we all know what happens in there. And <laughs> you know that there's never been an incident there. So those those kind of places, if if you're looking for you know friendly uh, accommodations in Vegas, hit us up on our website or on our Facebook and we can point you in some of the right directions there. So, Absolutely. so you got the tour, you got the trim ready classes, you got the church. What else, what, what else you got? Church and chapel. Well, what church about, and chapel. Yeah, what about these weddings now? Uh, are you, have you started doing the weddings? When are, are you going to officially be ready to start doing cannabis weddings? And are they themed in that, like, do you have, like, uh, cannabis showgirls? Or, you know, like, you go to an Elvis wedding, right? You, know, you see okay. Elvis there. Are you going to see some kind of cannabis characters? or? So we, we will be ready for a 420 week okay. to be doing uh, weddings. I'm going to be working with Kurt to uh, put out a, a special there so for locals, even if they want to do You, heard it, you heard it first here on the Internet. 
worldwide. Vegas is now going to be having cannabis weddings right here, 420 this year, 2016. Yep. yep. And, uh, you know, the big thing is... In addition to the chapel, of course, having uh, a nice cannabis decor to it, um, we are going to give uh, grooms the option of changing into a cannabis uh, cannabis suit. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. For the brides, they will have a you know nice silk cannabis bouquet. The groom having a boutonniere. Uh, we also are working with a, a local artist who's going to come in and put out a couple murals throughout the building. So there's going to be a lot of different photo opportunities these all you know somewhat on cannabis, cannabis corsages and, and things like that you got the limo oh. service already got, got the, the limo, limo service to pick people up cool. and um you know you know it's 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 just uh you know it's something that we, we want to see happen out here and, and hopefully uh right now i know we can't smoke there okay? correct but do we have at least cannabis air freshener or something like that <laughs> we're uh <laughs> we're working a, on a couple of things set the <laughs> mood you know and the ambiance and all <laughs> you're, that you're this is vegas you know i i agree and cannabis uh fog machines we're, yeah we're looking into all that right now okay and we will definitely have some uh yeah. nice uh, you know when i go to bob marley's i sit on his bed i smoke a doobie in the church and everything else okay. I, i'm so, curious you're you're in um uh, where you are you're in the city of las vegas is correct it, uh, compared to clark wow. county uh, lb be in Hoover. Did you have any uh, uh, any kick on what you wanted to do from the city council? Did they uh, did they ask you some hard questions? I know some of them are not too friendly to this issue. Uh, since we're still going through the process, uh, I haven't been asked any questions uh, with regards to the chapel. No, mm -hmm. with regards to the church, yeah, kind of. I think it was really they wanted to see what the finished product was. They've they've seen the website. They've seen what we're all about. They understand that you know basically besides our our one belief that cannabis is a miracle plant we mm. very much are similar to other religions out there that currently exist um, but I, I think once again you know ultimately we're the chapel is somewhat of a novelty it's no different than you know going to an Elvis wedding chapel it mm -hmm. just happens to be cannabis sure. are our props hmm. what's next for you pseudo cannabis Do you have yeah. all these projects <laughs> like obviously I would assume you want IP1 to pass the recreational initiative. I, I you know, I, I think it's a direction that is going. Of course, I'm a huge supporter of it. Uh, if for some reason it didn't get passed, I mean, of course, we would continue to help pioneer the industry. But uh, yes, if that day ever comes, I think you know all the businesses would uh, continue to grow. Of course. Mm -hmm. Do you hope to get into the the, the more actually, you know, do you want to dispense cannabis someday? Do you want to have a cultivation? Do you want to have a dispensary? Is that the ultimate goal or are you happy? Are you going to be happy here? In an ancillary business. Yeah, yeah. doing what you're doing. I, you know, the the cool thing is that the ancillary businesses, they're fun. They're, they're still fun. And they're safe. Um, yeah, and they're safe. Uh, I am part of a MME. We're called Nuveda National Medicinal Solutions. Okay. We actually did receive two dispensary licenses. One of them's on 3rd Street in the city of Las Vegas. The other one's in uh, North Las Vegas on Las Vegas Boulevard. So eventually one day, if we ever do get up and running, uh, I would probably take somewhat of a role there. But doesn't ever oh, happen. You're already involved with that too, damn. <laughs> All right, well, well, well done, man. Good for you. I'm Thank very, you. very right. happy to have you and, you know, just investing in the industry and just being so brave, you know. It's, uh, you know, risk equals reward, man, and you're really putting it out there. I really hope that all this really comes together for you. So, thank you. you know, thank, I, thank I appreciate you for, it. For everything. All right, and That's with that, we're, we're going to take our first break. Make sure you uh, uh, take care of our sponsors, uh, Nevada Pure, Essence Vegas, and Sahara yeah. Wellness. We'll see you soon. We can 702 Nevada Cannabis News Hour. Now, here again, the We Can Radio Team. Welcome back to the Nevada Cannabis News Hour, coming to you live from the Waywalker Studio at Vegas All Net Radio. Uh, today, we have guest Drew Green in here from the United uh, Higher Power Cannabis Chapel. So, if you have any questions, feel free to call in at 702 483 4444. So, um, what else we got coming up tomorrow? We have one of our sponsors, Essence, is having the grand opening of their Las Vegas Boulevard location. Yeah, yes, Essence. So, yep, tomorrow at four o'clock. So, they're billing this as the only dispensary on the Las Vegas Strip, and it's uh, located at twenty three oh seven South Las Vegas Boulevard. It starts at four p.m. If you go to our website or our Facebook page, there's a link that you can RSVP and get all your information in. So if you want to come on in and take advantage of any discounts that they might be having, you'll already be checked in. Right. Now, last time when they opened up their one on uh, West Tropicana, they had some 
phenomenal discounts. They're running yeah. 25% off. So right. they haven't released what they're doing at this one, but I'm sure that they'll be doing something. So come on down and check yeah. it out tomorrow at 4 o'clock on Las Vegas yeah. Boulevard. And this is the second of their third location. So, yep. you know, let's uh, let's really support that. That's fantastic. And mm -hmm. these are my swag essence sunglasses <laughs> that they gave me. So well, and, uh, if you need a ride to the dispensary, I believe right. you can uh, provide that, Mr. Green. How do they get a hold of you for yeah. that? Yeah, uh, there we go. Our uh, phone number is 844 or four twenty, and that's at eight six eight seven four two zero. And yes, uh, Essence is a good uh, affiliate of ours. We're going to be sending a lot of our tours to them because they are, in fact, on Las Vegas Boulevard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if you want a VIP experience, you know, Ooh. get a hold of 420 oh. Tours there, and they'll take you over there in the <laughs> in the 420 Lemo, and you can have a good old time. Now, when yep. we say it's on yeah. Las Vegas Boulevard, where is it really? Because that's well, the street okay. goes from LBB California. Oh, right. it's right there it's, on the it's corner. Just, it's north yeah. of Sahara, because the Clark County made it clear that they were not going to license any MMEs on Las Vegas yeah. Boulevard. In the that's strip it. corridor, in the tourist corridor. Right. But, but Clark County ends at Sahara yes. Avenue. And so north of that is the city of Las Vegas, <laughs> and these guys just went, you know, a half you block north bastards. of Sahara and got into this spot and got the city to approve. So, so is they'll it be the, the only one on the strip for a East while. or west side of the street? It's on the uh, uh, east, east side. side. East it's, side. Right so, where the so strip gun club used to be. Oh, oh okay, sure. I'm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Or the Holy Cow? Huh. Isn't the Holy no, 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 no. There's some businesses. On, if you're going okay. north on Las Vegas Boulevard and you cross Sahara, there's this that there little... used to be the hemp shop there, right? Diversity is on the left-hand side, yeah, on, on the, the right. west side yeah. of the street. Uh, but these businesses are on the east side. There's a bunch of little suites there. There used mm -hmm. to be a soul food place there, mm -hmm. an old rundown motel, and all kinds of and it's just stuff. Just in the city limits. Yeah, yeah. just barely there. Yeah. That is very clever. Damn. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and that's interesting because uh, Sahara seems to be loaded with dispensers loaded. up and down. I mean, yeah. all the way from because Maryland the to Rainbow. Because the north side from is Maryland the city, and the south side I mean, is the county. It's incredible. Right. You know, I, I live in the suburbs, and I can walk to the dispensary. If I want to, yeah, you got, yeah. If you go down Sahara, you first you'll have Essence, and then you run into Las Vegas Relief, and then 420 Wellness, right. and then a little bit further down on the other side of the street, on the south side, Inyo. you run into Inyo. Yeah, yeah. and then the Source oh, yeah. also. Yeah. Way yeah. Up west. Oh yeah, <laughs> west on the source. Yeah. So that, that's where that's where our tour goes, right down there, down down Sahara. And, and, and the I great think thing about the too, up on Buffalo. Yeah, there is the uh, Apothecarium. Yeah, it's up on Buffalo and Sahara. Yeah, more than five or six. Jesus. Yeah, they're they're all a little different too. When Should you, rename you Sarah? Go them all, yeah, you know. I mean, you well, go in the one and they got tea, and the next one's got uh, donuts. You know? so, so basically, <laughs> I mean, so if you want a car or you want weed, you just go down to Sahara. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Because that's where all the auto dealerships and all the dispensaries. Uh, so in other words, you don't need a fancy <laughs> limo. You'll just take the uh, the bus. Well, if you uh, if you're a new patient on 420, you just bounce down the street and <laughs> yeah. get all the specials. Well, I thought it was pretty cool. Inyo, you know, I can't wait. I mean, there's a brand new Domino's right next door. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah did you see that they, they closed? It. They closed the Domino's across. The, they yeah. waited until Enyo got licensed and put yeah. in. Then they closed the Domino's across the street and moved across the street to be in the suite next door to the cannabis dispensary. Yeah. Yeah, it's I a know. good good business move. Yeah. Good yeah. They're move. still remodeling and they're getting ready to open up. <laughs> so we were talking a little bit earlier about IP1, which is coming up in, in the next election cycle. And for all of you who would be listening to this and who are uh, proponents of, of safe and responsible use of this plant, uh, then you have to be an ambassador and you have to go out there and convince neighbors and convince family that they that this is an important election and it is for a lot of reasons mm. there are deep ideological differences between left and right in this election mm -hmm. but on on this issue uh, if if you have people they're going to be going out and voting you want to make sure they pull the lever yes on IP1 and not no and and a lot of people have preconceived prejudices about uh, cannabis use and about the type of people that use them and so rather than go through uh, an entire litany of, of long arguments about you know hippies and stoners and all that sort of stuff yeah. uh, you've got to be able to hit them really quickly and how do you do that you find out what their objection is yeah well why are you against it and and they'll tell you their number one or two reasons very quickly so all you have to be able to do is just counter those arguments and you know a, a really quick list of, of things that IP1 will accomplish is number one it's going to reduce violent crime because we have a we have another story uh, about a guy in Las Vegas who uh, pled guilty to a drug deal that left led to the death of another man and this happened up in North Las Vegas and uh, court documents allege that the defendant and another man uh, shot 
uh, to death a man who was selling them marijuana. And this was on, on the pounds level. And so somebody thought they were going to get a good score, and they killed people. And this guy is going to go away for 25 years now. We don't have to name him. That's irrelevant here. But, um, you know, uh, they attempted to, to sell 20 pounds of pot uh, for uh, about $35,000, and these guys just ripped them off. And so if you, if you pass IP1, you reduce that kind of crime because right. people are not going out and, and shooting each other over uh, hijacking cigarettes or, yeah. or, or alcohol. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's so very infrequent. Right. Uh, what it'll also do is it'll improve seller accountability and drug safety. And we're seeing that in the dispensaries now. Yeah. Nevada has the most stringent restrictions and testing regimens on medical marijuana of any state in the country. And so you take that and transfer it over. When, you know, over the years, as I've seen uh, weed from various people, Oh, what's that on? What are those little black specks? You know, there's something still crawling on it. Or, or, yeah. or what did you spray with it to, so I have these dead spider mites on it right. now? And, you know, you have a seller accountability in a regular market, regulated market so, because they want you to come back. They're licensed. They know they're going to be there next week and next month and next year. So this will, this will absolutely uh, improve the, the safety level of the product that you'd be buying. It also reduces drug availability to children right. because no, nobody who has a, a beer and liquor license is going to be selling to underage kids because they know that license will get yanked. And it's right. the same thing here where they're talking about zero, zero tolerance on this. Right. And all the areas that have done this, too, all the states that have legalized it and are restricting it, even not quite as hard as we are, are, are eliminating the cartel. Yes. The cartels are backing out of these states like Oregon and Washington and Colorado and, and even, even here the uh, because they just they, they can't infiltrate our market. Mm -hmm. All the plants are tested, DNA. I mean, my goodness gracious, from uh, no, who point wants, A to point who B. Wants I mean, that kind of brick stuff yeah, that we can get. You know, and it's not worth it. The heroin the market store. is the big thing now, you know, yes. and, and these other drugs and stuff. So, you know, the war on drugs, let's go after that shit, you know. Absolutely. But, uh, but pot and cannabis, my goodness gracious. Well, the key Absolutely. is to Tell the your neighbors over. to register to vote. That's mm -hmm. really the one thing. You know, mm -hmm. that you can have as much passion for it if you want. When the day comes, and if you forgot to go out and get your voter registration card a month before, you know, right. you're in trouble, and mm -hmm. we're in trouble. And that's right. what happened to California last mm -hmm. time they uh, they tried to legalize it back a few years ago. Mm -hmm. They had a bad turnout the vote campaign. It wasn't during a presidential election cycle. It becomes very difficult to do that. Luckily, this year you're going to have the very the two political parties after the primary season registering people to vote. You'll have mm -hmm. V-Reg teams out at your uh, your DMVs again and your grocery stores and all that kind of stuff like you see every four years. Not luckily, they they do a lot of that for us. And yes, luckily we have a link on our website wecan702.org where you can go register to vote. Yep. But Take please, right to, right to the Nevada. State site, yeah, Secretary and, uh, of State, you register right there right. online now. But yeah, that yeah. is so crucial and imperative. I just cannot stress it enough. Right. Now, we don't like everything in the bill, okay, folks? We're medical marijuana patients. Our position will oh, not Of course change. not. Our, we will still be like patients it. and we will still be fighting for your rights, and we will still be legal in Nevada, mm -hmm. okay, no matter what happens in November. But we're encouraging people to consider voting in favor of this for a lot of reasons because it does help the patients, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, it's going to settle a number of issues for us in, our, in, in some of the battles we're fighting, such as your right to, to grow your own. Mm -hmm. Okay, no right doubt. now we can grow 12 plants, but eventually they like to take that right away from us. But in, if the recreational passes, the, the uh, recreational is guaranteeing six just for recreational people. So that means patients won't lose our rights either. Absolutely. So uh, because we have a constitutional guarantee. Mm -hmm. So um, it's all a lot of these things are important. So it's not a perfect bill, but we're asking you to consider it. And if you, s you can support it, please do so. If not, it, still vote. Still vote. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Absolutely. You know, there are so many important things uh, that these that this bill will accomplish uh, to just tag off a few others. It reduces nonviolent prisoner population. And that's something that each of us are paying for out of our taxes, mm. whether we're talking about, uh, you know, here and we're talking about a, a, a state or local level. Mm. But we're paying those property taxes that go out and they fund the police department, they fund other things. And, you know, not only does it reduce prisoner population if this passes, but it also means that real crime can be dealt with. Right. You know, since the war on drugs started oh, 50 years ago, um, we have a, a lessening, uh, a lowering in the percentage of murder 
case closure rates, a lessening in the number of people, uh, the percentage of people who are getting convicted for sexual assault. So, you know, taking low-hanging fruit, marijuana use, mm -hmm. which does not affect anybody but those people who are using it, um, and taking that off the, the police menu uh, will allow them to refocus on, on areas that we really think are important and are really, you know, affect many people's quality of life. I saw a stat on the news yeah. the other day that said Very that violent good. crime is up 80 percent year over year in the Valley. Yeah. Mm. It's crazy. That's yeah. that's insane numbers. Right. Between wow. all the you know, between all the various crimes that they consider a violent crime, like mm. the robberies and burglaries mm. and stuff like that, it's just the numbers are astronomical. Mm. It's not, not good. No. <laughs> we definitely need police resources allocated to serious crimes. So, yeah. Well, yeah. what about uh, we have another new dispensary that just opened up in Prump. Well, yeah, what we got. That? Well, actually, yeah, the uh, the Grove out in Pahrump just opened yeah. up. Yeah, and uh, uh, we have a weekend chapter in Pahrump. Uh, join that, folks. We've got a new dispensary just opened up. There's a lot of great things out in Pahrump, just over the hump. And um, yeah. and uh, the the Grove, got? the Grove out there, they're going to be doing a grand opening celebration next week, Thursday, March 17th, St. Patrick's Day, from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. They're going to do five dollar pre rolls. Ten dollars off their first purchase when uh, when they sign up for the Grove Society. There's going to be a DJ on hand. Karma Holistic will be there, um, uh, getting people through the process of the cards. And Karma will also be offering a fifty dollar new patient discount the day of the grand opening. So, okay. Okay. so if you're out in Pahrump and you need a doctor, I know there's not a whole lot of them out there. You can uh, stop by the Grove next week Thursday, and Karma Holistic will be in town getting you sent, signed up for your medical marijuana card. So yeah. Yeah, another uh, little interesting uh, note about that is the uh, the dispensaries out in uh, Pahrump are getting quite involved. The uh, students they were able to help a half a dozen st a dozen students actually uh, go to Washington D.C. so that they could participate in some kind of government program uh, that they uh, been nice. trying to do for years and years. But the county dried up their money, so the dispensaries and the cultivation facilities kicked in like eight thousand dollars and. To, so that these kids can go on March 25th and continue the tradition of of hawking in Washington, yep. D.C. Well, that's great you that know. they were willing to take the money from the yeah. organization and let it be known that they were taking the money right. from yeah. the organization so, because uh, that's, that's yeah. become, an become an issue with right. some of the things. They're like, oh, we'll take your money, but we can't acknowledge right. that it was you that we took the money from, so yeah. it takes the fun out of it for you. It's, right. it's, it's, and, almost, it's almost yeah. comical sometimes when you're into that. We did a food drive uh, like two, three years ago during Halloween, and when we took it all into the food banks and since we're a federal nonprofit we asked for a receipt you know because mm -hmm. we're a federal 501c3 and they told us they couldn't provide us with a receipt because of the type of organization we were yeah i would have found a different <laughs> kind of so exactly yeah. we took the food and we said well then you know kind of kind of felt bad you know the reason we did this was to help people and then just because we're a cannabis organization we're not allowed to make a yeah a, on the books donation to them our generosity is somehow suspect yeah well them. wash your mouth out with hemp soap i guess yeah. <laughs> so, you know. a couple other yeah. things we got coming up um we got our new patient support meeting this saturday at our new location wow. uh which is uh at right next door to the source dispensary nice. so right. the source was kind enough to donate us some space there and we'll be holding our patient support group there this saturday at two o'clock be sure uh, to come on by. Uh, you don't have to be a patient to attend. Uh, they're gonna, we're gonna have sandwiches and drinks there. And uh, if you are a patient, you'll receive a coupon for the source on that day. And it's a, it's quite a nice discount. So mm. come on by, learn a little bit. You know, get some, get some discounted meds and check out the source. So. Yeah, it's at uh, Sahara and uh, Rainbow. Sahara I believe that's and Rainbow, on the right southeast on the corner. corner of Sahara and Rainbow southeast behind corner. the 7-Eleven, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, you yeah. can't miss it. There's a big sign on it, a big green cross, and it says, Open Marijuana Dispensary, the source. Mm -hmm. So you you can't miss it right on the corner. That'll be what? If you're looking at the front of the dispensary, it'll be to the there. right hand side in suite number eight. Suite number eight, yeah. Suite at number 2550 eight. South Rainbow. So we have our own. Well, yeah, we really hope to see you guys there. You know, we obviously loved the coffee bean and tea leaf for all those years that they were yeah. able to provide us with a place to go but 
the time has come, yeah, and right. we're more than grateful to have the opportunity to be in conjunction with one of these uh, these MME establishments that is kind and grateful enough to provide us And as I say, if you're not a patient, this. don't be afraid to come on down. Come on down. We can teach you how to become a patient. Sure. If you're interested in seeing a dispensary, we can arrange a tour of the source with you, you know, so you can you can kind of see what this is all about, and, you know, we can help you through that patient process there also. So right. Speaking of... Uh, of becoming a patient and and driving you down and and, and all this sort of stuff um, uh, with drew with with your 420 tours uh, one of the services that you offer is to help out-of-state patients um, get their doctor referral but that's not just anybody from any state or any medical marijuana state even it's only if that state like California allows for telemedicine uh, correct. So there has been a little bit of a change over the past two weeks uh, with the change in the regulations. Now the doctors uh, we use out of California are taking other state driver's licenses. Mm -hmm. So it has expanded it uh, from about October till, you know, second week of February, we were doing solely people that come from California where they had a passport. But we use EaseMD. It's a telehealth app. Mm -hmm. uh, and basically, you know, it connects uh, people that are looking to get their card with a doctor. Uh, we do it all inside of our 420 SUV or our Canabus. It takes about anywhere from about 10 to 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes at the most, depending on the wait uh, to see a doctor in the queue. So then does, will is a doctor willing then to see a patient from any state let's pick something like mississippi you know that doesn't have a medical marijuana program other than the government farm that's uh, in in gulfport yeah <laughs> correct yes so th that is that is really what has changed over the months and i think part of it is because we 420 tours have have been getting busier mm -hmm. so with us getting busier you know the app or the service behind the app is starting to see that okay you know this is this is what they're doing and uh, they've allocated doctors that the way they interpret the law in california mm -hmm. is that you don't technically have to have a california driver's license to get a recommendation you don't have to be a resident you of a, a state resident. to receive medical treatment correct yeah. So with that being said, it's really kind of opened up the door for us. You know, my team is able to basically talk to anybody on the strip. And as long as they're willing to go through the legal route mm -hmm. of getting legal and then going to a legal dispensary, we're able to service them. So somebody from a non-medical marijuana state or territory could, uh, could come and take one of these tours and see a California doctor and then be legal for possession and consumption in Nevada. Oh Correct. Mm. Sort of an extended <laughs> way to get reciprocity. It's quasi, wow. it's quasi yeah, recreational. It's something about necessity, yeah, yeah, yeah. mother of yeah, invention. Yeah, so we the, love loopholes. Yeah, yeah we do. The, the big thing ultimately is that you know I do we do disclaim we let everybody know that you know if you come from Mississippi, uh, yes, this allows you to buy in Nevada, but if you end up you know driving you know flying down to California, most likely it's not going to allow you into a cannabis dispensary in California or a collective as they'd call it. Mm. You might find one that will allow you, or you might find delivery service that will allow that, but for the most part, it's it's only really for Nevada use. Well, for all you brave listeners out there who may be from another state and want to try a, a novel challenge to the law, here's your opportunity. Yep. Right. So, and Nevada right. is the only state that has reciprocity. Yep. And with that, well, I think Kurt's going to sum yeah, us up. We're, we're running out of time here, so once again, be sure you check out our sponsors, Nevada Pure Out on Boulder Highway, Essence Vegas, which is out on West Tropicana and tomorrow on Las Vegas Strip, and uh, Sahara Wellness at 420 East Sahara. Also, make sure uh, we got our St. Patty's Day weekend potluck coming up. More information on our website at weekend702.org. That's Saturday, March 19th. And then we have our mansion party on April 16th. Boy, this one's going to be a good one. You don't want to miss it. So, And our first Sunday session, Sunday, April 24th at 4 o'clock at the Higher Power Cannabis Chapel, South Las Vegas Boulevard. And opinions expressed on this program were those of the hosts and guests and did not necessarily reflect those of Vegas All Net Radio, its affiliates, or its parent company.